Hey guys, Dante here, and welcome back to my channel, The Burger Thought. And welcome to another episode of The Toy Chest, where I show you customized toys I've made of old and new. Now I know this seems like a weird setup. Usually we start these videos right at the table, and all you really see are my hands and the dirty mess that is known as my workbench. But I want to start things off a little differently today. Essentially, I just want to put a little spotlight on the origins of this particular project. So, first off, I am a big fan of Mad Max. Uh, primarily uh, Thunderdome, which is where the whole thing started for me. And then afterwards, I watched the original three movies, which were Mad Max, Mad Max, Ro Road Warrior, Thunderdome, Thunderdome. <laughs> and then after that, of course, Fury Road. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Now, before that being said, I just, I don't know, I just love the idea of, like, this weird semi-dystopian future. I say semi because uh, there's still apparently enough resources to customize your own vehicles and weld things together. Uh, it's not so far ahead where it ends up like Nausicaa, Valley of the Winds, where everything's starting from the very beginning. Um... It's just this wee little nexus, and also because of where it takes place, which is like the Australian outback, I believe, you automatically have this desert landscape, uh, because apparently the outback and Australia itself is nothing but desert. I don't know. I don't know if there. You guys correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, I, I just have this love of that kind of world. So what today's build is going to be about is making some customized Mad Max inspired vehicles of destruction um so that's my love but the real real reason for this video is because i've recently became a fan and subscriber so definitely do the same of the channel uh bill makes stuff uh bill uh or is it bill making stuff either way you will see the link for that down below uh bill makes stuff is essentially uh this one guy named bill surprisingly uh who just makes a lot of things from scratch uh, usually on a small tabletop scale, um, he'll make monsters, little figurines, play sets, battle mats, etc. And there are a number of people like him, such as uh, Black Magic Craft, and essentially all the other people who work along with Bill on their, their individual projects. But I want to highlight Bill because recently he did a scratch build in the Mad Max vein uh, for the tabletop game known as Gaslands, which I recently became aware of. So today's build, like I said, is just taking a bunch of cheap dollar store cars such as these. This is literally a pack of one, two, three, four, five cars that I paid $4 for in the roughly Matchbox um, Hot Wheels uh, scale of cars, um, which is perfect for what we need. And that's my uh, rambling for the start of this. Let's get to what we normally do, which is... You staring at my workbench and my grummy, grummy hands. Let's jump into it, shall we? Hey guys! Oh wait, I really did that part. Moving on. So, um, let's focus on what vehicles we have to work with. We are going to be using this bad boy and this beauty right here. And yeah, so uh, your eyes are not deceive you. One is obviously a big red pickup truck. Funny fact, I actually just saw this on my block recently. Like someone just drove by and then this is that color, this exact model with four doors, tinted black windows. It was pretty much this guy right here. So perfect. And he's a perfect Mad Max toy because of the fact that um, you have a lot to work with. Lots of roof space, big open back. He's a big hefty vehicle you know, raised uh, on the carriage. So this is perfect for this kind of world. But then I found this guy and I love this. This is a Matchbox skid steer. It is like just a little block of pure metal right there. Uh, for those of you not in the know, skid steers are basically construction machines that uh, could do everything. You could put a bucket on the end of it. You could put pitchforks at the end of it. You could put, uh, uh, not pitchforks, but uh, sorry, uh, like a forklift at the front. This gets switched back and forth between everything you could use, anything you could need. It has it. It's, it's like the, uh, the little machine that could. And I actually use this at my job. Um, so when I saw it on the shelf, I was like, I'm going to make this into a Mad Max vehicle. But what's really funny is that this bad boy right here, in all of its little stubby glory, these guys only move about 10 miles an hour. 
so like just the idea of trying to race in one of these is hysterical so he's gonna be uh the crowning achievement but we will get to him afterwards once we work with this guy but first let's see what we have to work with so this is just a few things i grabbed out of my junk drawers uh things i thought that would come in handy i got some um knockoff transformer treads various guns of various quality uh in terms of detailing um we got types of wire i mean we got uh actual metal wires of aluminum and uh, really thin copper we got these uh springy plastic wires from various toys uh these are like antennas from like military toys uh i have this i have a whole box of these bubble wands um whose metal plastic can also be used as a wire that'll come in handy miscellaneous plastic bits from other toys and this little section right here are just uh resin castings uh whenever i do copies of objects sometimes i have small molds that i pour the extra resin into in case i miscalculate and in this case we got these cool double barrel guns uh we have some uh some gears which can double as like i guess a type of spikes and just miscellaneous shapes and uh, other other types of cylinders so uh this is kind of what we're working with just junk so I, i've chosen these to show you right now because these are kind of the ones that I kind of caught my attention but we'll probably pick up and use things uh along the way as well so we have our vehicles we have our supplies uh we have lots of glue to work with uh, and we got tweezers to uh pick up small objects with so now it's a matter of just kind of starting with a basic idea of what we want the vehicle to be uh just something general and then building it up from there building up the idea and then building up the actual junk that is on each vehicle to make it look used and beaten so um let's get going and the idea for this is dustly we have a nice big wide top as mentioned earlier so i'm going to take this miscellaneous piece of plastic uh probably cut the top off of this and i want to take the barrel from this gun and what i want to do is uh make a like turret like someone has created this kind of dome turret uh poked a hole through the uh back seats of this car and if we're lucky i could probably even get it to turn back and forth uh now i was struggling what to do with the background with the background with the back of the truck itself i wasn't sure what, what i wanted to do should i take one of these resin cannons i showed earlier and put it there and then i realized i have a few busted resins uh resins that didn't come out right of the centerpiece of the cannon and I realize, you know, these kind of look like um, uh, transformers, not robot transformers. I'm talking about electrical transformers, especially if you put them back to back like that. So what we're going to do, I'm going to uh, trim down the uh, half cannons that were on this, uh, basically focusing on the main square body. We're going to glue these together like that. And I'm going to take uh, this weird plunger like part of these uh, uh, bubble wands. I'm going to take two of those and cut them off and these are going to be the antennas and we're going to make a giant electrical transformer on the back of this cart and we'll probably have some wires leading off of that and i was thinking we could take this uh ladder from a from like a train set some cheap train toy i had and uh, maybe mount it to the front and have the wires leading to the front so it has a cannon on top and it actually has an electrical fence glued to the front of the actual cart We'll probably add some more spike detail stuff on the back as well uh but yeah i think that's what we're gonna go with this guy he's gonna have a mounted gun and he's gonna just be literally supercharged and then from there we'll add a bunch of smaller finer details uh as well so i want to incorporate some metal fencing and metal gates on uh the windows on the back bumper just metal railings everywhere so what i've done is i've taken some aluminum wire cut it and stuck it into this piece of um soft uh insulation foam uh to give me a kind of frame to work with and i'm just gonna take these handy dandy tweezers and i will glue haphazardly all over the metal piece here and then just drop the wiring right on top of it in a kind of asymmetrical form that way it doesn't just look like a simple you know ladder of some type
So now everything is held together nice and tight with some crazy glue. Once again, we have our white uh, styrene sheets, uh, a small rectangle piece on either side to hide the seams. We have uh, our two trash uh, resin pieces and our bubble wand uh, plugs, like it's like the end of the bubble wand itself. And we have an exaggerated uh, transformer. Let me see if I can get it into a good focus. There we go. So I was thinking, um, this is going to be like the highlight of this character. Sure, he has this little gun turret with a uh, plastic dome, a plastic bead, and a the end of a <laughs> really cheap laser gun in it inside of it. But um, no, I think the main thing is going to be him him having this electrical uh do that on the back so that's what he's going to be carrying so i decided to go ahead and um i've taken the um toy ladder and i figured why not have him with a ram he has like a steel gate or in this case a very large ladder on the front of the car and he just rams into stuff powered by uh this electrical tower here so essentially he is a moving Electric guy, electrified fence. Uh, so with that said, he needs some installation. So I went ahead and took some of the green stuff. That's the uh, two-part epoxy, and I kind of molded this uh, like a plastic flap. He has it, it tucks in on either side at the wheel well, and it's also being pulled back theoretically uh, by this uh, wire, this uh, large metal wire. Speaking of which, I've also gone and glued on the metal fencing from earlier. It's a bit chunkier than I expected, but I like that right there. Uh, I tried to drill a hole to the top to give ourselves the move <clears throat> movable gun turret. Man, my throat is really messed up for today. Sorry, guys. Um, I don't think we're going to have a movable gun turret, but you can see where it sits right there. And, yeah, the idea is um, he's going to be running down the road, running, driving down the road, with this tower in the back along with a few other miscellaneous mechanical doodads this is just a weird butt end to a really cheap plastic uh, um, sci-fi gun if you even call it that I just cut a piece off because it kind of looks like a small uh, mechanical box of some type I just rounded off the edges by putting a little jewel on top that's also going to sit in the back along with the tower and I'm going to be using once again, miscellaneous pieces of resin castings I have. So this will feed from the back uh, to this kind of end point, which will then split into two wires, which will be um, uh, which will be made out of this this so aluminum wire. But we're going to paint them black so they'll look like two electrical wires that will then come out and attach to the ladder on two sides. You know, negative and positive. I'm going to also be adding some extra spikes to uh, reinforce this piece, the bottom, maybe some wooden uh, spikes, because luckily the bumper here is plastic, so I could just do two divots and sit some plastic, uh, correction, some wooden toothpicks if I have any. Here we go. Uh, like half this toothpick will be sitting like that, so we'll be driving with these spikes in the front. And yeah, this is this is pretty much like hey this looks like that let's put it together oh wow now we have an idea because originally i wasn't sure what was going to go with this i wasn't sure if i was just going to make him the big gun cart which is why which is where this came into place but now that we have this made it's really going to take shape so we have our main pieces which are all going to be added these are the main components spikes uh metal tubing metal uh, uh rubber wires made out of uh actual metal wires and let's go do that and we're going to be adding this all onto him but before i start gluing these like pinnacle points uh i do want to do some prep for the paint so i'm going to keep him red he's going to stay red but i'm going to go take some uh paint remover i have some um acetone and with a, with a thin q-tip i'm going to actually start removing 
patches of paint from this revealing the uh, die cast metal beneath it to kind of give it like the paint's been worn away and then we could also add some rust around the edges of where those two parts meet so I definitely want to do that first before I start adding more glue because I don't want to break down the glue uh, but one more thing on the back I took some coffee stirs like a really 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 thin and long um, uh, kind of popsicle stick uh, kind of coffee stir oh here we go it's buried beneath my uh, my uh, cutting tools doesn't took a I just took a coffee stir did some grooves and cuts into it you can't really see it now but hopefully with a dry brush it'll work and just glue them right into the back you do some sanding on this die cast it gives you enough enough of a rough texture so he has like a big metal um, back end at least and then from there, uh, maybe some more doodads, maybe some more metal plating with riveting. Uh, once again, riveting uh, technique from Bill Makes Stuff, which is where you just poke a pin into your styrene. Uh, and when you flip it, you have the outdent. You have the indent and the outdent. Is that a word? Outdent? On the opposite end. Let me see if I can get that into focus. You could kind of see the bumps. Once again, a little dry brush, but uh, yeah, I think that is the main thing. That's his gimmick. Did a little back and forth, some sanding uh, first to allow me to get the um, acetone, you know, really in there to the base layer to get the colors off. And then kind of back and forth, some spots, some spots acetone first to loosen it up, then some sanding, back and forth, back and forth. But I like it, gives a nice uh, scraped up look. So because I want to keep uh, primarily all of the red paint of this figurine, figurine of this vehicle, I went ahead and hit it with two heavy coats of workable fixative, or for some people you could also use a matte finish. Uh, this is usually used for like charcoal work. If you're working in charcoal or pastel, you hit it with this to kind of seal it, but still give you a chance to keep work well, working on it. So hitting it, hitting this die cast figurine with its wood and plastic bits um, with this will hopefully give it enough texture, enough of a grit where I could then go in and start painting it. So I'm going to do a little mixed media here. I'm going to use a little bit of enamel, especially because of this silver enamel, which really stands out very nice. I'm using this uh, flat yellow. I'm going to just do one of the doors of flat yellow for now. Uh, once I have all the colors laid in uh, probably a little bit of airbrush enamel I'm then gonna just take this powder I have it's a kind of like a I can't really describe it it's just a powder from this um, foam block that uh, I use as a piece of artwork it was a foam block built for carving you kind of carve into it it's like a fake stone for kids and I have this uh, powder that comes off of it this will be used to add mud and grime and rust um, within the wheel wells and then I might also add a little bit on the edging uh, wherever the paint was chipped off and just kind of go messy with it but yeah so first we're just gonna start by you know adding some flat colors and we're gonna do the basics where you add a flat then we're gonna go in there with a little bit of wet brush a little bit of dry brush to give it the different shades and really just bring it all together Thank you. 
Now for a vehicle that exists in a dystopian future, I did add a lot of silver, primarily on the metal gate, the metal dome, the metal plating, and the big tower and medical doodads in the back. <laughs> medical, sorry. Mechanical doodads in the back. Um, or medical, you know, I'm sure once someone gets hit by this vehicle, they'll definitely need, need a doctor. Uh, but the main idea is, uh, I didn't know this silver would allow me to then also really dirty it with some the heavy washes. Um, I could then add some more flat gray tones on top, so this silver acts as a uh, as an undertone, undercoat, kind of how uh, the natural metal of the car is being shown through the scraping of the red paint. As I add more color tones and different like variations, uh, this silver is just going to act as a nice backing. So uh, I'm going to leave the toothpicks uh, brown. I'll paint them more brown. Uh, more shades of brown to match the wooden planks in the back and the miscellaneous wood in the back of the cart and the window. Uh, just kind of keep that all, you know, one general color. Uh, but yeah, that's the basic. Just adding some flat colors in it and we're going to slowly build it up with grime and grit and all the fun stuff that really gives this guy character. After a second hit with the workable fixative to help uh, to help hold all the little grime in place, it is now for the coup de grace. We are gonna hit this guy with a brown wash, which once once again is just some water, a dab of dishwashing soap, and a paint of your choice. And in this case, brown. Let's do it. Just get it all in there. Get it nice and dirty. A lot of it is probably gonna pool in the uh, in the bed of the pickup truck, which is perfect. Not to mention the uh, the wood in the back, the actual wooden. Uh, stir stick, so hopefully soak into that as well. So before we get to the final reveal of our um, electrically powered death mobile, we're gonna go ahead and move to the next one, which is the skid steer. All right, so I have ideas for this. Uh, first things first, we've gone and cut the barrel, the very end piece of this uh, this kind of cheap rifle. I, I really like the, the holes on the side of it, 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 you know, the ventilation holes, and just the general, like, shape of it. So we're going to take this, and we're going to mount it at just the right length where the shovel, the, the arm, can still, you know, go up and down. But we need something to power it. Um, so I was thinking, why not, like, a large propane tank of some type? So earlier I showed uh, these pieces of plastic I got from a uh, plastic hanger. And I looked up online large-scale propane tanks with propane and propane accessories. And we'll probably attach all that via some random tubing I have. And uh, in addition to the back of this, we're going to add this guy, which was the tail end of laser gun. The actual part of it uh, was used for the previous guy. Uh, just random bits of red plastic. And I figured, yeah, this, we're going to mount it right there on the back. And then put some stuff around it to really fill it out. Uh, so that's going to be like the gas powered part. We're going to have, um, well, propane anyway. We're going to have a propane tank that powers a flamethrower-esque machine on top, on top, a uh, engine on the back, and then we'll add more as we go along. So let's uh, let's make this little, let's make this little tank right now. Going to the craft store and buying a box of just random wooden bits and bobs. I'm not even sure what you would even use half these for. Maybe for like plugs and the side of furniture or whatever it was a, just a big box but in these you sometimes find little pieces like this and this right here uh will be perfect as a kind of exhaust point uh or if you want to you know paint it silver and use it as a spear but i'm going to use it for an exhaust point 
Um, and also because it's wood, it takes very well to, you know, types of super glue. And it's great for just filling up little gaps between all the plastic bits you have. Uh, so with the uh, back end of our skid steer getting kind of heavy, uh, I figured we should add some stuff to the front end. So I have this weird headpiece. It's a headdress from some kind of old Todd McFarlane figurine. Um, essentially, it's soft rubber and it has this cool curving spike look that kind of reminds me of like uh, like a mammoth tusk. And it also has this piece here which goes on the forehead, uh, which is a kind of like a metal gate, gate of some type. So I figure we're going to... Cut this up into cut this up into pieces. Glue these to the bucket. Glue this on the front of the skid steer, along with some metal plating. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but there are rivet designs in this little rivet punches, uh, because whoever designed the skid steer for this toy uh, did not understand the fact that skid steers have doors in the front that you know protect the guy driving in it. So since this does not have a door, it's gonna be made out of gate and plates. And then we'll probably add some more little flourishes here and there. And uh, from there, move on to the painting. So, bam. This is what you get when you have uh, precision gluing. Uh, very, very careful gluing. Uh, even though a little bit got on the wheel, it still spins, but you know, a bit of a struggle. But uh, yeah, let's look at some quick details because we're not at the painting stage yet, but we are at the uh, we are at the finish line of all the fine detailing. So he has his uh, flamethrower on the top that has a rubbery pole, a rubbery tube that goes down into our propane tank, which is held on to straps and um, welded plating, which is probably a bad idea to weld anything to a propane tank. Uh, there's that wooden doll, uh, that wouldn't stick, whatever you want to call it, wooden thingy. Uh, for the exhaust pipe, here are our rocket boosters resting on top of this uh, kind of um, farming tool-esque dragging uh, 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 pitchfork in the back. Uh, some miscellaneous mechanics. We have some extra spikes on the side, uh, which are just toothpicks. We have our extra spikes in the front. And the whole thing still moves up and down and has clearance past the metal plating and metal gate that is the front windshield. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna mask, uh, use some masking tape of some type to cover most of the main body, the green and the translucent um, cockpit windows. And we are gonna prime this, unlike the other figurine, I do wanna prime everything else with the exception of a little bit of the green. We are gonna keep some green, but this will be spray painted to bring it all together. And then we're gonna move on to the painting. He looks awesome, he looks evil, he looks like he's gonna cause some trouble. And that's the way I like it. Alrighty then. So, once again, uh, with a little bit of enamel silver and some uh, mixed media of airbrushed paints and a little bit of that uh, grounded powder for kind of rust and, uh, in this case, for more dirt. I figured using this grounded powder... Uh, when we get to the um, brown wash, uh, this powder will absorb and become more like rust and grime, not just red rust, but like soil and grime. It should pull all of these beautiful colors together. Look at that, baby. All right, so I was able to I was able to keep a lot of the green I wanted to keep from um, saying it would keep too much. <laughs> I was able to keep a lot of the green I wanted. Uh, on the main body. I did a lot of the mechanical parts in silver, shiny silver, and then dabbed some uh, flat gray on certain areas such as the drag net, this drag kind of rake in the back, some mechanics on the back as well. Uh, the pipe is silver because I want it to be like a chrome color. Silver on the tips and then I went in there once again with a uh, tone of brown. It's a um, airbrush paint brown and I would dab the paint and then powder this on it uh, as a kind of glue so you have a little bit of rusty material on the uh, on the back ends tons of it under the wheels tons of it under the well in the un under carriage or together in the bucket like I really went crazy with uh, this brown powder so when we get to the washing stage I'm gonna do a brown wash pretty much from the waist down. <laughs> Just everything below is going to be a brown wash. 
right? My uh, homemade brown wash. And then I'll take my homemade black wash, which is kind of uh, kind of washed out actually, um, to get into all the nooks and crannies of the mechanics and into the little holes of the gun and etc. etc. I'd like to thank my friends at Giorgio Armani for loaning me this. All right, so let's start off with. The Electric Car of Doom, which is a working title. Um, you know what? Let's call this guy Shock Jock. This is the Shock Jockey. Um, yeah, so this is our fully painted little, um, ironically, electric <laughs> pickup truck of Doom. So yeah, here's our big boy. Here's our beautiful boy. Um... So the uh, brown wash washed into all of the powder material. I wanted to kind of turn into rust. Uh, I was mainly around such as like the wheels and undercarriage. But it's fine because it just kind of gives it like, like dry dirt and grime that has like kicked up into the wheel well. And yeah, it's, it's like dirt and rust combined, right? And... Uh, that wet brush soaked in beautifully into the wood uh, wooden sticks in the back, giving it like this old wood material. It's, it uh, washed over into all the uh, little nooks and crannies of the electrical components, which I then also gave a black wash. So I did brown wash all over and then black wash specifically into the metal to dull down that silver. And I kind of like to uh, imagine that so essentially, these are it, it, this is controlled by two people. There's a guy driving, and there's a guy kind of in the back seat with his head inside of this cannon. And they're pretty much just DJs. They're shock jockeys, and, and uh, they're like racing while at the same time doing their own commentary. And ironically, uh, f for a series that's based on uh, Guzzoline, like in Mad Max, they call it Guzzoline, and of course the game Gaslands. Uh, these guys have like a giant electric generator. Uh, and let's uh, let's come in a little closer, see if we can stay in focus. So you have your electric generator. You have the back of the car, which once again is just wooden planks in the back. Like this electrical doodad, random piece of plastic, feeds into this PVC kind of pipe, which then breaks off into two electrical wires that are charging this kind of ladder or fence, which has wooden spikes holding it in place. You have this uh, rubber top that just pulled over the car. Um, it tucks into either side of the wheel well. And it also has this uh, uh, metal chain that's kind of keeping it tied up to the, to the side view mirror. Uh, you have some wooden planks on one side of the windshield. You have that mix, mix matched car. Once again, there's that beautiful grime, that, uh, that brown powder I used that just kind of sucked up all of the brown, wet, um, really wet brush, like really just poured and dabbed in there wet brush to give it all that beautiful under, under grime of the, I say under grime, grime of the undercarriage. You got some miscellaneous wood and material in the back. You got rust on the side of the dome. On the top of the dome, you have your scraped off bits of metal. Scraped up bits of metal on the car where like other cars have slammed into it. You could kind of make out the small uh, rivets uh, made in these uh, metal plates. Rivets in the metal plates right here. Yeah, it's just the idea of these two, like these two guys who are in a kind of murder race. Uh, narrating their own... <laughs> navigating their own drive down the hill, um, slamming into people, electrifying other cars when they slam into them, shooting them with God knows what, whatever ammo this runs on. Also added some small plating here, so it gives the idea that this pipe is like plated, um, plated down, like hammered into the side with metal plates holding it in place. And I'm actually very happy with this, guys. I'm not bad for my first time trying to turn a pickup truck into a truck o doom. And that 
it is a shock jock. The uh, <laughs> one of the few electric powered cars in the distant future. So let's uh, let's jump from this guy to my personal favorite, the uh, the skid mark. Ta-da! So this is the skid mark, uh, which is just a skid steer of doom in the distant future, or well, not too distant future, depending on how you view gas prices right now. Let's do a little turnaround real quick. There's lots of fine detail I'm going to zoom in on. But he is just covered in spikes and dangerous things of all types. And I'm actually really happy with him. Okay, let's get in here nice and close. Ta-da! The skid mark. <laughs> with lots of grime. So in this one, once I realized how much of the wet brush affected the brown powder. I decided to put the brown powder everywhere in the under part. Like this thing's been doing loop de loops in the mud. Um, and then I did the brown wet brush. And then I did black wet brush. And all the silver bits. And then I did some dry brushing as I mentioned earlier in the video. On the grates of uh, the cab. So you have those metal grates going up and down. And a little bit in certain areas to help things pop. Fine detailing. What are the fine detailing? Well, you have this big mud and rust covered bucket with spikes in the front, which still can go up and down despite all the stuff I've added to it. You got wooden spikes sticking out on either side. You have that uh, plating in the front. You have that metal gate with some uh, metal sheets with the little rivets, nice and silver. Because, as I mentioned earlier, there was no front door on this for some reason. You got all this mud in the front. This guy's just been plowing right through uh, mud and opponents. You have uh, this weird kind of like tractor farming rake that's on the back. Uh, in case someone gets too close, they'll just kind of get caught beneath that. And uh, it's a skid steer. And skid steers move at 10 miles an hour. <laughs> so it went ahead and added the nice rocket booster. We added some black around the edge of the rocket booster to give it like, uh, you know, soot and flame. Once again, lots of mud detailing. The extension of the smokestack, which is located like right there in the back as well. So it's off-centered slightly. Uh, smokestack right there. More mud, more detailing in terms of like grime. And the piece de resistance, the... Uh, Flamethrower on top. With a little bit of soot black in the front. A little bit of rust. Right where, the, right, where the, right where the seams meet. And a tube that comes down into a large uh, propane tank. Which is you know standing straight up. Strapped on with these metal. Uh, these blackened metal rivets. Uh, uh, metal bars that wrap around it. And also... Strapped down with this one metal plate on the side, which is really rusting away. So at some point, that's going to just explode. That is just not safety. That's not, that, that, that's not OSHA approved. And that's our boy. This is the skid steer. I am extremely proud of this guy. I love this guy. I have a special heart. A special heart. I have a special place in my heart for, for you know, for this weirdo. And, uh... Yeah, just seeing, like, just imagining a skid steer that's rocket-powered just plowing down the road alongside other vehicles such as these. It just, it warms my, it warms the chaotic side of my, of my heart. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the result of my first time trying to customize miniature cars of doom and destruction. And, uh, yeah, as I said, it has a special place in my heart because, I don't know, there's just something entertaining about, like, the absurdity that are cause of doom in a distant future where resources are limited, yet somehow you could still make, well, just these weird, weird creations. And, uh, yeah, once again, it was also my attempt to work in a smaller scale 
and sticking to that scale as close as possible. Uh, so you could still kind of imagine these being made um, to the scale. There's no giant, giant guns. There's no over-exaggeration of what could be done. Uh, like, you could probably see this being made. I mean, heck, if you've seen Fury Road, all those cars were real, despite how crazy and improbable they looked. And that's pretty much it. I am going to go ahead and uh, post these on my Instagram page. I'll do some close-up shots and also put it on my DeviantArt. Once again, all underneath the Burgosart links down below in the description. Uh, as well as the links to the other YouTubers and individuals I mentioned earlier who, you know, help inspire this particular project. And I think that is going to be it for this, guys. And, uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Once again, uh, I am Dante. Like, favorite, share, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the future. Later! Hello again. If you like this video, please be sure to follow me on all these social media websites with the links in the description down below. Thanks again.